best and most blessed greetings of divine peace and light. Assalamu alaikum, beloved brothers and sisters. This is Ihsan, and this is Soul of Islam Radio. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, stated that there is a blessed seed which is a healing for every illness with the exception of death itself, and that this is the black seed. Although known of as a healing remedy to Muslims for over a thousand years based on the statement of the Prophet, black seed, also known by the names of Nigella sativa, black cumin, cologne, and others, has only recently been discovered by the Western world. In the last couple of decades, a tremendous amount of research has been ongoing into its unique healing potential for all manner of illnesses, and testimonials abound to its powerful healing potential. I recently took the opportunity to sit down with Abdullah Naki of the Blessed Seed to discuss the miraculous healing capacity of the Black Seed. In this conversation, we discussed not only the healing power of Black Seed, but also of Abdullah's personal journey to Islam, the origin story of the Blessed Seed, which is one of the very first companies making high-quality Black Seed oil available to the public, and much more. Beloved brothers and sisters, I hope you enjoy this entertaining and illuminating conversation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, beloved Soul of Islam radio listeners. I pray that you are all well. I am very happy and excited to be here with Sidi Abdullah Naki, who is the founder of Blessed Seed, the company which has really helped to get black seed oil out into the mainstream. I've seen them. In fact, I've been using their products for some years now. And uh, it was a great opportunity for me to get together with uh, Sidi and brother Abdullah to discuss the benefits of Black Seed, his own personal background and journey, and uh, help shed some light on this because it's such an important thing that is really becoming quite popular in the mainstream now. So uh, great to be here with you, uh, Sidi Abdullah. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. Thank you very much. A pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here with you, uh, brother Abdullah. Maybe we can begin. I'd, I'd love to talk. I mean, I'd love to get straight into the topic of black seed oil and your work in that domain. But first, maybe we can get a little bit of a personal background about you. It's always great to get the audience to know a little bit about the founder of companies that I might be talking to so that they can help understand you know, what led you to this and, and actually help better understand the product. So whatever you'd like to share with us, Sidi Abdullah, about your personal background. Okay. My personal background is um, that... Well, I, I mean, you know, I thought you said we we're going to be here for an hour. I didn't know it's going to be all afternoon. Um, let me just start with I became a Muslim through meeting Sheikh Nazim. I mean, before I met Sheikh Nazim, I knew that Islam was truth, and um, but I had to I had to see the beauty of Islam in His divine presence. Mashallah. I didn't know that. I didn't actually know that you had met and you had come to Islam through Mona Sheikh Nazim. Um, how long ago was that? That was, uh, I was 22, so that would be 1982. Wow, subhanAllah, Deen. MashaAllah. What was it about that experience that, that made you or inspired you to take that step into Islam? Well, don't ask me, because I didn't know what was going on. The spirituality was so big, and I just went with the flow. And uh, one of Sheikh Nazim's followers, who was supposed to be the representative of our city, came to me and said, you're going to take Shahada. I hadn't asked anyone to take Shahada, but I was quite happy about the idea. So um, I went and took Shahada. Sure. And then what happened? What was the, what was the aftermath? What of happened that? was glory, glory, hallelujah. <laughs> so what happened was, is that I was then transported into uh, the Islamic religion the religion of Islam. So I woke up the next morning realizing that I am now a Muslim and it was beautiful. So as, as many people that I see that have become Muslim express, it's, it is the most beautiful thing to happen. That Allah chose me to actually take that step of accepting a religion that is very much against the culture of the United Kingdom, which is where I was born. And uh, wow, subhanAllah, beautiful, absolutely fantastic. Mm. How did your life change after that moment? <laughs> How did my life change? Well, I, the reason I laugh is uh, because it was I took Shahada in Ramadan and I was living in a flat with, um, there were one, two, three, three of the ladies living in this house. And um, I remember, I think it was about 
two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I was up to make my suhoor, and and they come storming in from the disco, wondering what 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 is he doing up at this time making porridge? Of course, I I I, I didn't say glory glory. I didn't say to them, hey girls, it's time for you to find the way. No, I didn't say that to them. I I just you know I was polite with them and they. So you're asking me how did my life change? That is that is uh, that's why I left because they were they were they were out of their heads but couldn't quite get it together to understand why I was there at that time making porridge. So they didn't ask me what are you doing. And I remember uh, how did my life change? Well, it was in the middle of Ramadan, so it took a dramatic change. And the, I remember. How did my life change? One way to describe it is I always used to go every Christmas to my uncle's house. And that Christmas, which was about six months later, I went to my uncle's house, as always, which was a big vicarage transformed into uh, a living abode. And it was big. And our family is big. And everyone was chattering. You could hear this uh, chitter chatter and excitement. And I entered the room. And I think it took about three seconds for the whole chitter chatter to end. Three seconds, and suddenly a whole room full of chitter chatter. You could have heard a pin drop. You must have made quite and the entrance. Looking at me, and no one could say a word. So I, I kind of thought, well, I, 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 what shall I do? So I went and greeted everyone and shook everyone's hand, and um, still no one knew what to say. I mean, the room was full of about. 15 to 20 people. So one of my uncles started a conversation with Daniel. He said, I've got a question. Why, why is it that the first person you went to greet was a male? And alhamdulillah, uh, everyone was waiting for my answer. And another uh, of my uncles answered for me. He said, Michael, I think he went to the first person he saw. So my uncle then said, um, yes, but I, I have another question. What is, what is the difference between men and women? And I was very naive of, of the religion. I, what, what should I say? So I said, well, there's, there's no difference between men. I said, I, no, I said, men and women in Islam are equal. I said, but there is a difference. And then the uncle who had helped me before said, yes, I've noticed that. And, 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 and the ice was broken. So my life changed very dramatically because I didn't just accept Islam, but I accepted it seriously. And I, I went to uh, Sheikh Mazim that summer. I was very naive, Iksan. I mean, you were born Muslim, but I was, I was very naive. And I, I, I couldn't believe this beautiful religion I'd entered. And Sheikh Nazim left London, um, as I used to visit every year. He would, he would come and visit us. And it was like, uh, it, was, it was a very beautiful experience. And... He went back and I kind of thought, right, well, I can go and enjoy my... I, I, I will go and visit Sheikh Nazim in Cyprus. And I bought my ticket. And it's done. You, you, you were born a Muslim. I was, but but in fact, I, I didn't really understand much of the religion until I got into much later into university when I began studying Islam for the first time. Well, I was very naive. And I, I, I was very, very... Um, where did you study in in, in Canada? No, I, I I was studying in uni in university in California. Uh, but in terms of religious studies, then that's something that I actually just became interested in and started to study independently at that point. And um, and then me personally, you know, I was born in a Muslim family, but it, we weren't particularly practicing, and so I didn't even know um, growing up really how to pray, how to do wudu properly. I just I just knew that I was a Muslim. Some basic uh, beliefs about Islam and the differences between Islam and, let's say, Christianity. But I only started actually uh, studying and practicing the religion, you know, at about 18, 17, 18 years old when I was, uh, you know, at, at university. And it was only shortly thereafter that I also met, incredibly, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim on his first or on one of his early visits to the U.S. That was back in 1996. Uh, Super. Wow. Yeah. So that was a big American tour, was it? It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you met Sheikh Nazim with all of these followers there, with all the big turbans and jewels. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was quite incredible, something I'd never seen before. I mean, I had read the stories of the Sahabas and the companions, and, and as I was studying Islam for a few years before meeting Sheikh Nazim, I had, the group I was studying with placed a lot of emphasis and importance on the Sunnah of the Prophet, on the dress of the Prophet, but I never saw anybody carry it so 
beautifully, as I saw Sheikh Nazim and his uh, students and followers and the shayukh around him. It was it was uh, like stepping in into an alternative reality, uh, and it was it was just incredible and beautiful, you know, inspiring in many ways. I'm guessing that's that's probably was a bit of your appearance when you stepped into the house on Christmas. Dressed? Were you dressed in Islamic attire? <laughs> yes, I was dressed Islamically. Um, so, of course, I mean, the, the uncle who asked me about the difference between uh, ladies, he 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 later he 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 had actually, I, I think I'd met in that year, or was it the year after? He he was concerned I was with the Ayatollah Khomeini. I see. Um, but yes, you hit it on the nail, what you were mentioning, because I was very naive when I bought this ticket to go to Cyprus, and I was so happy. I thought, wow, what a beautiful religion. And I was expecting, um, I was expecting, you know, all these Muslims, because I'm going to Cyprus, so all these people in Cyprus are Muslims. So I got on the plane, and I, I was, you know, the time for prayer came up, and I, I was waiting for the Azan to be recited. I, I, you know, prayer time has come, no Azan. I was expecting the plane to be reciting the Azan, and there would be a prayer. No Azan. Prayer time has uh, is over. So I started looking around the plane to see are they praying? And as you say, you, you didn't learn, you didn't know to pray. And I was very naive. I thought everyone who had been born into this beautiful religion would, of course, be practicing it. <laughs> oh, so I, I learned my first lesson of uh, Islam is not quite as big. As I had, uh, as I had uh, innocently believed. Yeah, I mean, I think you entered into Islam, and I rediscovered Islam at a day and an age in which um, Islam is a strange thing, as the Prophet ﷺ said, it will be. It will be a strange thing in these days. Those actually, perhaps, keeping and practicing the faith and keeping the the way in the Sunnah of the Prophet. Such are the times. Yes, we are living in very dangerous times. So. Um... My my uncle, the uncle who who uh, asked me about the difference between ladies, who actually was he actually met Sheikh Nazim twice. He passed away last summer, so I went to his funeral, and um, my cousin invited me for Christmas. And I said, I said, look, I'm a Muslim. You know, what am I going to do there for Christmas? But he said we don't do anything for Christianity. So he wanted me to come, and I understood this is a calling. I should go, as I did. And so this was after the funeral. In the funeral, in my visit to the cousin in the funeral, I could speak about, about religion, I think, three minutes. This last visit I went, I could speak about religion for half an hour. Three minutes was all I could take last visit. This visit, I, 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 they were open. You know, their, their hearts were open, and I could, I could speak for half an hour. Mm, not sure. Yes, so I, I am I'm England. We're living in these very strange times where... You know, if people speak the truth, people are like this. Yeah. You only have to look at, at the politics of our English government. The, um, the prime minister is now closing the door to people fleeing from war zones. So if people come illegally from a war zone, they will not only be deported, but they will be banned from ever entering the country again. Right. And I saw a similar interview where the same prime minister was speaking about men who think they've become a woman. And he's saying we have to be compassionate for them. So we have to be compassionate for men who think they've become women, but we, we, we should not be compassionate for people who are running away from war. If you can be compassionate only for people who, are, who have lost their mind, their mentality, but you can't be compassionate for people who are running for their lives. We're living in, in, in times of um, people love falsehood. So you, you mentioned, Brother Abdullah, that this time there was much more openness amongst your family with regards to top discussions on faith and religion. Would you attribute that to the fact that we're beginning to see in the world what where life and human culture ends up going when there is an absence of religion, and that people are beginning to realize this, or at least some people are? Well, it's like I said, you know, we're living in times where we're living in times of falsehood. So... I don't know the answer to that question because my, my experience of England and then I went to visit my mother in France is that um, I think it is becoming more black and white. Mm -hmm. It's like Shane Ozim uh, Fendi said that the Mehdi will only come when he can cut. And he compared that to the cornea uh, operation of an eye. He said you will only cut 
cut when it's big enough that you can cut. And we're now living in, in the days where the darkness is becoming so big, it's a mystery. Um, Mehdi A. Wasalam, the signs are, are very close, but they're only in, in the, this knowledge is only in the hands of, uh, of those who have been accepted by the Prophet to actually know, is he Jew? I'm sorry, what was that last thing you said? Only, only the people who are who have connection to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will know the timing of the appearance of the Mehdi. Mm-hmm. Even they can be informed. Uh, it's, it is a mystery. So now, where, where are you living? In America? I'm based in the U.S., but I'm currently in Turkey, like you now, apparently. You've in relocated. Turkey, where are you? In Istanbul? No, I'm further in the south. I'm working a little project here with a friend in Antalya, and then I'll be visiting Istanbul shortly, inshallah. But currently in the south. And what, what's your project? It's a, it's an audio project. Um, we'll see if we can come up with something new uh, in terms of a meditative audio experience that also incorporates uh, dhikr Allah. My friend here is a sound technician, music producer. So this idea came to us. We thought we would see if uh, if we can get together and see what comes of it. So slowly working on that, inshallah, hopefully we'll get something done before Ramadan. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So let me ask you, uh, Brother Abdullah, I mean, you entered in this, into Islam quite suddenly, right? You you met Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, you embraced Islam literally on the spot. Later, afterwards, did you doubt what you did? Did you question what you did? If this is correct, if this is the right path, if you had just somehow made a rash decision or anything like that? Absolutely the opposite. I, 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 I woke up realizing i woke up realizing that i am now muslim and it, it was beautiful and that beauty uh, never never left me the beauty of this beautiful religion um i mean when i got on the plane and i was expecting the azam and expecting all these people to be praying i i, I got a wake-up call that uh, the religion isn't quite as big as i had innocently uh, ex- expected it to be um, the the people who were lucky luckily enough lucky enough to have been born into this beautiful religion didn't know that that question uh, uh, in fact it's the first time you've ever asked me that I've actually ever thought did I make a rash decision um, I never ever thought did I make a rash decision it was because it was so beautiful it was just so um, I remember saying to my friend you know uh, the person who, who had introduced me to Sheikh Nazim I remember saying to him. This is, I, I feel like I've learned light years, light years. Uh, you can learn something in a year, but if you learn something in a light year, a light year is what, how many thousands and thousands of years? And, and, and Allah Ta'ala had filled my heart with so much happiness that I realized why I am here. Obviously, I didn't realize why I am here, but I realized I had been created. The reality of why I have been created, which I, I, I you, were, you were born in Islam. We were born in, in Christianity, and the uh, my experience of Christianity was unimpressed. If I went to church with my nan, I, I'd go. I'd go with my nan because I loved my nan, and then I know she loved me. Loved it if I went, but I knew I would get very. It would be very, very, very. And I, I'm when I say very, it was really a bore to have to sit there and listen to this chap speaking about stuff that didn't relate to me. And when I was at school, my experience of school was uh, and the last years of my education, were, I went to a very good school and we had a priest and he used to give us lectures every morning and then we used to sing um, glory, glory, hallelujah, start the day. If we sing glory, 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 hallelujah, it's like praising Allah anyway. So that's why, that's why I say hallelujah. And I came to this school late. I was 15 when I came to this school. And I joined the Friday club, which was the last lesson on a Friday. And you could join the army or you could join the theatre. And because I was 15, I joined the chess club. And I went to this chess club every Friday and played chess. And there was one Friday afternoon. It was a very hot summer afternoon. And I came to the class and everyone was playing chess and there weren't any more chess pieces, so I couldn't play. So there weren't enough uh, boards for us all to play. So I had got nothing to do. And it was very hot, and this priest was looking after the class. And I went to him and I said, please, sir, can I go and get myself a drink of water? And he was busy marking papers, and he said, no, 
you should have gone and got a drink of water before you came to the class. I, I couldn't believe it. You know, there was this guy who'd been preaching to us every day, you know, and he's supposed to be our example of, of Christianity. And there he's saying to me, I can't go and get myself a drink of water on a very hot sense. And I, I did this to him. But I, 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 I was fed up. I think I was waiting 10, 15 minutes. I was fed up. I went and got myself a drink of water. And I came back and he called me over. He said, you're in detention. So the next week I had to spend half an hour after school in school because I had disobeyed my teacher. Three months later, it's on. Three months later. Three months later. SubhanAllah, Maheshrikun. Three months later, this priest gave us his lecture in the morning as he always gave his lecture in the morning. But this lecture hit it on the nail. If your enemy comes to you and he's thirsty and he asks you for water, you will give it to him. There I was, 15, 16 years old, listening to this. So I, I didn't I didn't like Christianity. So, so when my sister, and my, my sister is, um, and I, I'm praying very much because she's a very beautiful person, but she doesn't believe in the Lord. She doesn't believe in the Lord. And she said she was turned off Christianity for the, for anyway, I'm not, I'm going to bore all my audience. We, we, we want to talk about Black Seed, obviously, but, uh, you know, Christianity has lost it. She, uh, it's lost it. Christianity has lost it. You know, and the amount of people in England who are Christians, who've lost their religion, and I don't blame them a bit, because when I hear these priests talking, I mean, now they're debating, uh, they, they are, are, are now allowed Christianity homosexuals to uh, marry in the church. How can they expect people to believe them when they have lost the book that they follow? How can, how can they expect people to sincerely come to their religion? And England is in a terrible, 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 terrible condition. People have lost compassion, so much so that uh, a prime minister can talk about having compassion for people who, have really, who really need help. And I accept they need compassion. Of course they need compassion. They're, they're sick. You know, if, if God has created a man and that man thinks he's a woman, then there is something very, very, very seri serious, serious situation. And that person definitely needs compassion. But no one is objecting about, well, of course, a lot of people are objecting. But the rule will pass because a lot of people don't want these migrants to be coming in. Why has England lost its compassion? And that's, that's, that's the nation I was born in. Let me ask you, Sidi Abdullah, you, you entered into Islam and you also witnessed within Islam very early on, as you mentioned, on this plane going into Cyprus, that many Muslims were not even practicing and keeping their religion. But you found beauty and joy in Islam. What would you say was the qualifying difference for you? What was it that, that made Islam so attractive and beautiful and easy to hold on to for you, whereas so many Muslims are not even honoring or respecting or, or understanding what they have been born with? Wow. Um, that is very, 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 very deep. Where would I begin? Uh, the religion of Islam, if Allah chooses, um, I mean, if, if you want to ask, ask the question again, because it's so deep, you've, you throw me into an ocean of oblivion of how, where would I start to even show that how did I keep on to the religion where many people have lost it? That is the beauty of uh, Tasawwuf and a sheikh and a mushid. You have to have a mushid. If you don't have a mushid, then you can do your prayers, you can follow the sharia, you can go on umrah, but you don't have that connection. Of course, you have a connection. Allah is with everyone. But a sheikh is guided to show you how to destroy your ego. And if you truly follow your sheikh, and even if you don't truly follow your sheikh, your sheikh's sheik job is to destroy your ego. I remember Sheikh Hazan famously saying, I, I am your toilet. And what, why does he say that? Because we come with our egos, which he has to destroy. That's his job. That's the job of the mushi, to destroy the ego. So how do you destroy it? First of all, you have to reveal it. But does anyone like to see their ego? If you, if you were to tell me, you need to cut your hair, you need to present yourself nicely so people will, will like the look of you. I, I don't mind. But if you were to speak like that to people who are not in Sufism, etc., I can say I don't mind because I, I have made that decision myself to make that attack. But if you were to attack my ego, my ego will not, in, will, my ego will raise up and say, who are you doing? What are you, what is this? So, yes. And you met Sheikh Nazim also. You are now with his son the way and we're living in very difficult times my, my shape passed away 
because in my destiny, I came to another sheikh. And my sheikh also passed away, but the different, different difference between Sheikh Nazim and my sheikh is Sheikh Nazim left his son as his successor, whereas our sheikh did not. You have two children, Iksa. Four at the moment. Four? Four. Oh, you have four. So you've got four children. And uh, how is your wife in, 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 did she know Sheikh Nazim? Or did you meet after you met Sheikh Nazim? Yeah, so that's a bit of a long and complicated story. But my, my first wife, we met, and that's all my children are from the first wife. And so we met um, actually when I first started attending the Vicar Circles. Yeah. Uh, so you, when you came to Sheikh Nazim, you were single? Yes. Yeah. And I remember when I first met him, one of the first questions he would often ask uh, people, especially young men and women, young boys and girls, he would. The, one of the first questions was, are you married? He always placed such importance on uh, fulfilling that aspect of the religion very early on. Exactly. Man cannot be complete without woman, and woman cannot be complete if she is single. Mm -hmm. So now help me bridge now from this into Black Seed. How did you find yourself now making available and distributing Black Seed oil globally? Very good question. So I'll, I'll give you, the, I'll give you a bit of bullet points. So my late wife, Rachmetli, she, it was her idea because we, we had this idea that we should go to Damascus. And to go to Damascus, we, we knew, knew that we are going to need to make a living. So her idea was that we should start a black seed oil business. And she went that summer to ask Sheikh Nazim's permission for doing that. And he said he didn't only give permission, but he said, you must do it. So it wasn't any more a permission. It was actually request for permission had, had re revolved into an order. So we did it. And then she passed away in a car yeah. crash five months later. Yeah. And that took me to Germany. My destiny then took me to Germany. Yeah. And um, so the business just ticked along. I didn't have very much power to do the business, but it ticked along. And um, that's where I met my new sheikh in Germany, who, who is a Turk, was a Turk, Rachmetli. And he said to me in 2013, he didn't just say to me, he didn't just say to me, he said to everyone after we ate breakfast that we should all pray for my business. And I immediately thought, isn't this, isn't this worldly? But then I remembered I had bought a farm in Germany and this farm had got a, two barns. And my new sheikh actually visited me, visited this farm before I bought it. We both visited together and he said, I should buy this and turn it into a durga, which we had done. Two barns. There was one barn for the ladies and one barn for the, the gentlemen. But this farm didn't have electricity and water. And I said, oh, mean. I remember that we didn't have electricity and water. And he said, we should pray for my business. And when I remember that, I said, oh, mean. The next day, because my business was ticking, it was working, but it wasn't really making money. And it um, wasn't really making money. So... Um, the next day, after he, after he made this prayer, my sales trebled. The day after that, trebled. It, 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 the tra it didn't go down. Three days, still three times, and I realized this is not, this business is not my business. This business is not my business. I knew that this business is not my business. This is, Sheikh Nazim has said, we must do it. And Sheikh Nihat al-Zahuri prayed that we would, uh, we should pray for my business. And, and when that happened, I realized that this was not my business. But I, it is, it is my, my duty. And um, the business actually paid for a mosque in Bosnia. Wow. I would say at least, we paid at least, and I say this conservatively, we have paid at least 60% of the costs of building this Durga. And it is built with a, mo uh, um, a mosque. So the mosque is separate. And the living quarters are separate. And it's beautiful. I'll send you pictures later of it. Oh, please. So the business really became very successful. Um, yes, I had a lesson to learn with my shape because uh, something, a proposition came up for the business and um, it wasn't a good proposition. I believed what I had believed in one of uh, Sheikh Nazim's followers who advised me that this product was actually, he believed in this product very much and I believed him. So I, I took on this project. And when I asked my Sheikh, should, what does he think? He said, don't do that. But I, I felt I had gone too far into it to, to stop it. And I learned a big lesson from that because it was a catastrophic decision. Mm -hmm. So I'm now getting the business back into 
uh, being successful again. Uh, it's still successful, but uh, we, we, I, I had to learn a lot of lessons of um, the business is divine and you have to listen to your shake. That's right. Now. And if you don't listen to your shake, you've only got yourself to kick. <laughs> yeah. So Black Seed has, you know, I remember, right, we had learned about Black Seed many, many years ago when we knew of it because it was in the hadith of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi He had mentioned the virtues of Black Seed. But at the time, generally, people in the West didn't seem to know much about it at all. There was all kinds of other healing and remedies and, and supplements that were constantly, uh, you know, shared and it, their virtues discussed. We never heard about black seed. But I remember actually coming across your black seed oil on Amazon and reading some of the reviews maybe 10 years ago, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a little less, and just seeing amazing reviews of people left and right about the virtues of black seed oil, how this has helped them, how this has made a tremendous difference in their health and in their healing. And now there's been a lot more research and studies done into the healing effects of, of black seed and black seed oil. Tell us, Brother Abdullah, about black seed. What can you share with us about this miraculous remedy that the Prophet said is the cure for everything except death? Well, the cure, of, uh, the cure for everything except death. So, as I mentioned to many of my customers who, who phoned me, one of, one of the great, great prophets said it has a remedy for everything except, except death. What is the greatest disease we have in this time? What is the greatest disease of all time? Let me put it to you. What, what, what would you say is the greatest disease of mankind? A uh, physical disease or a spiritual disease? I'm assuming you mean physically. If you have that spiritual disease, you, you have the worst disease. I would say in terms of a manifest disease, cancer. No, spiritual. I'm speaking about spiritual. Mm, faithlessness. If you have faithlessness, you have no life. You have a, have a life, but it has no, no meaning. Because if you don't believe, if you don't believe, what is there to believe? Black seed has a cure for everything except death. And the greatest illness is that. And I'm so happy when this phone rings and my customers call me. Because if the door is open, I can say to them, we started this business because of the saying of the Prophet Muhammad. And what? why is that beautiful? Because many of the people who call are not Muslim. But many of them that call know that. They know what he said. And they know it's helping them. Black seed is curing cancer. The amount of people that have written to me saying it's killed our cancer, it's the amount of illnesses that it cures. And I still we started the business 20 years ago from the saying of the Prophet Muhammad. And I say to my customers, it's like a, a, a couple of days ago, a chap laughed when I told him that. And I said, I can understand why you laugh. But after working on it for 20 years, I said, I can understand why, why you laugh. I have to understand. Um, I have to understand because if if they if they don't believe in the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, then they're blind. Uh, okay, if they believe in Jesus, mashallah, they they are they have got a connection because they believe. If you believe in the Lord, you've got a connection. But if you're denying if you're denying the beauty, if you if you deny something that you don't know is the truth, then you're putting wool over your eyes. If you don't know it's the truth, but you're denying it. Explore it, because if anyone really explores the Prophet Muhammad, if anyone uh, explores his life, they will see that he was the most beautiful and beautiful and beautiful of people. And so the greatest disease in our time is that. And I am praying. I am praying and we must pray. And uh, as Muslims, we must pray. We must pray for, for everyone, exactly, especially for the saints, for the Ummah. But we must also pray for the people who are lost, who need our prayer more than more than anyone, because they are lost. Not that we should lose our energy on people who don't want to listen to us, but we should pray for them, because what does the Lord want? Why did he send the Prophet Muhammad? As a perfection, because he, he to know that, then you know Allah to Allah. What are some of the, what people might consider some of the most remarkable healing experiences that you have come across or, or been told from people who have been taking and using black seed oil? People who are taking black seed oil, uh, uh, well, there are many. You know, it kills, killed cancer cells, the amount of old people whose lives, they say they've, they've got their lives back. I think one of our perfect examples is, is a nurse who was working in, in a hospital. She got candida and she said, wow, did that, did that drive her crazy? Her tongue 
well, it wasn't pink, it was brown, and she was always irritated. She worked in a hospital. The doctors were her friends, and they gave her creams, they gave her all sorts. She went to specialists. No one could help her. Three years. I mean, three years. She was suffering. Mm. She could live, but she was always suffering. And her son looked for an alternative remedy and found us. She said when she tried the black seed, she felt instant, instant um, relief one week. Miracles. The amount of people who say it, it's miraculous what, what's happened to them. Amen. Amen. Inshallah, amen. When I say amen, inshallah, they become Muslim. Amen. Allahumma amen. One, one of our sayings on our website, we had to take it away, but we put it back. What the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, people love it. Hold on to the use of the black seed, for it has a remedy for everything except death. Mashallah. Allahu haq. And so what is the best way to use black seed oil? best way to use black seed oil is... Um, I would say, on a general sense, because everyone's different, but on a general sense, we would say take a teaspoon in the morning before food. Um, as a beginning, just keep on that for a week. And then after that, if you, as long as you don't notice any adverse reactions, then you can take two teaspoons, a teaspoon before you sleep. And we, we advise not to take more than three teaspoons a day, but everyone, everyone knows their constitution better than us. Just use this as a general guideline. Mm -hmm. We, we are, we're the only company in the world that still offer four different strengths of black seed oil. We were the first company to ever start that. We were the first company to sell strong black seed oil because no one ever looked and did research on black seed oil until we did. And now everyone is competing with us. And so we have a lot of competition with a lot of companies selling strong black seed oil. Also, a lot of not a lot of companies are doing it, though. They're all claiming to sell strong. They, have, they claim to have high thymoquinone. If you ask their analysis, they haven't got analysis. If you taste their oil, it doesn't taste like it's got a, a, a very much amount. And we've even had, we've even analyzed some of the companies and it's just hype. What does some of that research show in terms of black seed oil? Well, it's, it's had uh, over a thousand research papers done on it. Since those written, I mean, one way to describe how black seed was rediscovered was in Germany, Dr. Peter Schleicher, and he's a famous German doctor, a very big doctor in Germany. And his daughter had a, had a show horse, and her, his daughter's horse was suffering from acute asthma, had to have oxygen equipment applied to it so it could breathe. It was exceptionally severe. And he told his daughter, don't give it cortisone because it will destroy its beauty. And his daughter's horse was very famous for winning a lot of medals for being the best beautiful horse. And they couldn't find any alternative. They tried homeopathy. They tried all the alternatives. Nothing worked. And then he was on a phone to a doctor in Egypt who said, try black seed. And the horse was cured three weeks after. Interesting, isn't it? Always three weeks. So it's not always three weeks, but in these two examples, it's three weeks. Three weeks later, the horse was winning medals again. That's how acute the cure was. Now, the doctor was very surprised. He applied black seed to one of his patients, who was a big politician, also suffering from acute asthma, also cured. So he then took black seed to acute study in Germany, which is why you can now find black seed in every chemist in Germany. Nearly every chemist will have it. Nearly, nearly every health food shop and chemist will have it. So he started, he started the craze of researching in black seed it wasn't a craze it was it was it was an intelligent research and the amount of research that has been done on it candida cancer diabetes malaria cirrhosis i mean the list is endless you know you only have to write an illness on google you write the the illness and black seed oil and abstracts you will most likely find a research paper done on it mm. there is so much research done on wow. black seed that's wrong and so for some of these different types of conditions, are there other ways to, to take or apply black seed oil? Is it only, do you, is it typically just through ingestion or are there topical applications, for example, as well? As well, um, eczema, incredible for eczema. If you've got, because um, I, I suffer in my foot, my two, my little toe is too close to, to the next toe and it always gets uh, irritated and I put black seed oil, oil on it and it goes. Um, Cirrhosis, that's a very, very, uh, you can take it internally, but it's well known that you should, because it's antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, mm -hmm. so it relieves a condition like the lady who had candida, she applied it 
externally. Mm -hmm. So, yes, exactly. I mean, we also make beauty products and we, we have a very famous cream. And if lady have black spots or acne, black, this, this cream helps it. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. I mean, why did the prophet, peace be upon him, come to us? He came to us as a mercy. And one of his mercies was black seed. And I think it is a huge mercy because I, I hope and I pray that it will bring many people from the darkness of unbelief to the beauty of the beauty of accepting that, that your intelligence isn't isn't the greatest. If if a person believes that their intelligence is more is the is, is the highest and they don't believe in and the creator who obviously when you look at this universe and how, how everything of course there is an intelligence above mine. I I don't even I mean, my intelligence is, my intelligence is, look, I've been wearing my glasses the whole time where I didn't need to wear them. That's how large my intelligence is. And, and the creator keeps the whole universe running. But us, us, our stupid mankind is destroying the equilibrium of this beautiful planet where we won't be able to live on it anymore because we don't have that intelligence. But if we accept the holy books and we accept the holy saints, and if we live this life, for the beauty, the beauty that is within us. What is that beauty if it's within us? It is within us to find. But you cannot find that beauty if you don't correct your character. And the best of characters is the Prophet Muhammad. Ah, ah, me. The Amen. Prophet Muhammad, people Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. He is closer to us than our jugular vein. And if we don't work to correct our character, we can never find how close he is. Mm. So I'm now, I'm now going to um, give a summary of Black Seed. We started Black Seed from the address with Sheikh Nazim. We continued with it. My wife passed away. Sheikh Nazim didn't want me to see him. I was introduced to another Sheikh. I changed my Sheikh because destiny wanted me to change my Sheikh. I didn't want to lose my Sheikh, but my Sheikh didn't want to see me. And I needed my Sheikh. I was heartbroken. I needed my sheikh, but my sheikh said, don't come to me. At the same time, I introduced to another sheikh when I needed my sheikh. So I continued with my new sheikh. And the beauty of having a sheikh is that you, if you listen to your sheikh, you will succeed. If you have a car, you're not just going to get into that car and drive it. You need a teacher to teach you how to drive that. Because that. if you don't have that teacher and you go and try and drive that car, you will probably crash if you if you even start it so how are you going to find that treasure within yourself by yourself many people believe they found that they say i look after my heart they don't want to know about religion because they lead good lives i mean that they lead good lives and may it lead them to a good end yeah. because the most important moment in our lives is our last moments did we succeed in our life because this life is so short why are we here you didn't choose to come here. I didn't choose to come here. I didn't choose to go on that plane to Cyprus. I think I chose, but I didn't choose. I may delude myself with saying I chose to go to Cyprus. How do you choose something? Where does this intelligence come from that you choose something? And that is what is given to us and not given to animals. And animals, mashallah, they are beautiful. They're innocent, but they don't have that gift. We can choose. And if God gives us that beauty to choose, I mean, may God give that beauty to everyone. Why has he just chosen us? Why has he chosen me? God writes, and it is his decree. What will be, it will be. As I said, you said, how, how can you describe when so many people have lost their religion, how you kept on to your religion? And that is why I accepted Islam, because Islam, when the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, went to the other world, he left behind his successor. And they are the shapes, the rightly guided shapes who have the secrets, guide people to love people. Ameen al haq Subhanallah. Ameen. Ameen. Ameen Allah. Ameen. May Allah keep us close to those who are close and connected to Him, inshallah, and increase the light and faith in this world and Ameen. grant us a strong, uh, inshallah, strong root and anchor in His love and in His mercy and in His guidance and in His light. It's been a it's been a joy and a pleasure, Sidi Abdullah, speaking with you. And I hope, inshallah, we'll have additional conversations. This can go on for hours because there's so much. Another ten days, can't it? We can go on till till Ramadan. Yeah, Subhanallah. 
Um, and inshallah, ta'ala, we will have other opportunities. I look forward to it. How can people find the, uh, your website, Abdullah, and, and order uh, black seed oil? And I'm assuming, right, distribution throughout the world, not a, not a challenge for people to get it anywhere? Not a challenge at all. We are the blessed seed, theblessedseed.com. And I did want to make a code for this program, so I'll give it now, but it won't work because I forgot to ask my webmaster. But if you write Sufi, you you will get a a fifteen percent discount if you write Sufi. It will be a one time use if you write Sufi in the checkout. We'll ask if you have a discount code. Just write Sufi S U F I, and you will get fifteen percent discount. Wonderful. Um, and I'll confirm with you by the time that this airs that that's active and it should be because by the time we get this edited, um, ah. it should should be plenty of time. So. Perfect. We appreciate that. And inshallah, the uh, audience will appreciate that as well. And um, anything else uh, that you might want to share, Sidi Abdullah? Perhaps maybe a short dua to conclude? I mean, short dua. I'm, I know, I, I'm, like I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm your servant. So as you've been such a beautiful brother, I think the prayer comes from our hearts. So if I am to make prayer now, when I feel the presence of the Sheikh with us, I, I feel shy to pray when I feel he is with us. So I, I let him pray for us. And as you know, do better than me because my doer, my Arabic isn't so good. I will let you do the prayers and the rewards will obviously be going to the Sheikhs. Amen. Amen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. May Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the rank and light and nearness of his holy prophet that Allah Almighty guide us and strengthen us and connect us and unite us with those whom he is pleased with inshallah that we may be amongst those he is pleased with may Allah Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us in the company of the righteous and the true and the sincere as siddiqeen and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all healing both physically and spiritually and to follow in the footsteps of his last and final messenger the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah subhanahu wa rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun ala al-mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Al-Fatiha. Amen. Allahumma amin. May Allah accept. And uh, again, I thank you, Sidi Abdullah, for joining us. And inshallah, look forward to continuing the conversation with you and meeting you in person soon. Yes, I mean, when 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 you want to visit? Uh, inshallah, soon. I I'm planning that now, so I will reach out to you very quickly uh, after our session. Are you, are you coming for Ramadan? Inshallah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I Hopefully. mean, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ooh. Waalaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I pray that you enjoyed and benefited from this discussion and episode of Soul of Islam Radio. To help us continue to bring you these meaningful conversations regarding spiritual development and faith, do us a favor and give us a positive review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you happen to be listening to this podcast. And if you can think of at least one person who may benefit from this content, please share this episode with them. To learn more about the Blessed Seed and to take advantage of Brother Abdullah's special offer for Soul of Islam radio listeners, please head over to www.theblessedseed.com. Dot com. To further connect with me and to continue the conversation, please visit us at www.soulofislamradio.com. With the will and grace of God, I look forward to connecting with you soon. To your divine and eternal success. Mm-hmm.